Hey guys, good morning. What once again? Welcome to another episode of Hockey on the Spot with Brandon Barenfeld. I'm Brandon Barenfeld. Thank you all for joining me today. This is episode 134 of Hockey on the Spot, and for today's episode, we're I'm going to continue with the NHL's 30 teams in 30 days, and for today's team, we're going to be talking about the Carolina Hurricanes. <coughs> the Carolina Hurricanes are one interesting team, in my opinion, as uh, to talk about <laughs> because last season was for the marked the fifth straight year <coughs> that they missed the playoffs. Um, after a 2013 lockout shortened year where it looked like they were going to go to the playoffs, and you know they were the top team in the then in the then Southeast Division um, until Cam Ward suffered an injury. And it really set the team back, and they missed the playoffs because of that. Cam Ward was having a, ve- a stellar season up until that season-ending injury, and that killed the Hurricane season. However, one positive that came out of that year is that the top line of Eric Stahl, Alexander Semin, and Yuri Tulusti was one of the best lines, if not the best line, in the NHL that year. Um... They were unbelievable together. Looking to repeat that kind of success for 2013-2014 could not be done. Eric Stahl did not have an Eric Stahl type year, even though he did lead the team with 61 points. Alexander Semin had a good year, in my opinion. Not a great year, but a decent enough year. But Yuri Tulusti was just flat out awful last year. It was a major setback year for him. Um, so, <laughs> in many aspects of the game, this is a team that absolutely needs to get better. The real promise that they showed last year really came from their leading goal scorer, Jeff Skinner, who led the team with 33 goals. And it shows that this team does have the potential, they have the talent, they have the youngsters to do it, but last year it could, it could not be done. They finished 7th in the Metropolitan Division with a 36-35-11 record, which is one game over 100, but not good enough to make the playoffs. That's 13th in the Eastern Conference, um, and again, they did not qualify. So despite the fact that they did finish with a winning record, they knew changes had to be made, and boy, did they ever make some big changes in their front office. Um, Jim Rutherford, who had been the GM of this team, since 1994, when they were still the Hartford Whalers, <coughs> is gone now. He is now the general manager of the Pittsburgh Penguins. And they also fired head coach Kirk Muller, um, which, once again, an, a major change needed to be made. Um, so Kirk Muller was let go, go. In the GM spot, Ron Francis takes over as... GM of the team. He had previously, uh, um, for Ron, for, for Ron Francis, he had previously been vice president of hockey operations. Um, he was in that position for the past three seasons. And as far as Kirk Muller is concerned, he's been the head coach of this team for three seasons, and all three years they failed to make the playoffs. Offs. So in comes former Detroit Red Wings assistant coach Bill Peters. Um, Peters is a guy who is a defense and penalty kill specialist. That's what he was with the Red Wings, which tells you that it's very possible that the direction this team could be going is a more shut-down defensive type position, more like the Nashville Predators and the New Jersey Devils, kind of those, that kind of style. I don't see them being the same kind of offensive team under this new head coach. I mean, hey, they're still going to have the offensive offensive talent with Eric Stahl, um, Jeff Skinner, Alexander Semin, Yuri Tulusti, if he can get his game back in shape this year. You know, they have Elias Lindholm, who's coming up to be a big part of their team. Justin Falk is another youngster. He's one of the best young players in the league this year, in, in the league today. He's got one of the hardest shots in the league, and it's only going to get harder in time with age. 
So this is a team that's just absolutely growing, and they're really, this is more or less somewhat of a rebuild for the Hurricanes, as they're now ready to rely on their youngsters. Because outside of making those huge moves to the front office and coaching staff, as far as bringing in players go, they really didn't bring in too many guys, nor did they really lose too many guys. As far as losses, they only lost Manny Malhotra, who signed with the Montreal Canadiens. I mean, he was really good for the Hurricanes last year, here defensively. Um, and, of course, is always one of the best centermen as far as face-off winning goes in this league. Um... <coughs> He had a very good year for the Carolina Hurricanes last year. 13 points, you know, 7 goals. He was an even player. You know, defensively, he was one of their best players. So, I guess that's a decent loss for the Hurricanes, as Manny Malhotra does go on to sign with the Montreal Canadiens. And then, but then the only other loss other than him is third string... Is Justin Peters, who is really a third string goalie in Carolina, and he's not going to get any better, you know... Staying in Carolina, he ends up going to the Washington Capitals, where he'll definitely have a chance to be their number one guy. So those are really their only losses. I mean, there are some guys that are still pending free agents, but none of those guys are really going to be... I don't see many of these guys coming back. I see Drayson Bowman being a possibility to come back. <clears throat> but other than that, guys like Yoni Pitkin and Andre Loktyanov and Radek Dvorak, and Mike Komisarek, those guys are not going to be back. I mean, Yoni Pitkin, and who knows what's going to happen to him. His career could very well be over, for all we know. But anyway, as far as bringing in players, they really didn't do too much. The, you know, really the players they brought in was for depth and nothing more. You know, a Brad Malone from the Colorado Avalanche, who's, you know, nothing more than a fourth-line player. He, of course, is the cousin of Ryan Malone, um, you know, if he, if he even plays, he'll be on the fourth line. Um, they, all, you know, Jay McClement was probably their technically their biggest signing this off season, and really, he's just a shutdown type player. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong, he's a good player, and he'll fill Malhotra's spot very nicely. He's a guy who wins faceoffs, and he can kill penalties and block shots. You know, and he's younger than Manny Malhotra is by a few years, so he's still got some, you know, he's still got some time left in his prime, and he'll definitely help out their penalty killing and their ability to win faceoffs. And then the other other guy they brought in, they brought Tim Gleason back for his second stint with Carolina. He started last year with Carolina before they ultimately traded him to the Toronto Maple Leafs to acquire John Michael Lyles. And now Tim Gleason's back in Carolina, and John Michael Lyles is still there as well. So now both of them are Carolina Hurricanes. Now whether Tim Gleason's going to be a main a main player in the lineup like he had been previously, it, it remains to be seen. He could just be back as the seventh guy this time around. He's not the same player he used to be. Um, we all remember when Tim Gleason used to be one of the best shutdown defensemen in the game and one of the more physical type defensemen in the game. He's not that player anymore, or at least that's not what he showed this past season, combined with the Hurricanes and the Le and the Maple Leafs. Um, but he is 31 years of age, so he's still got you know, he's still got a couple good years left in him to try to get himself back into shape, you know, get himself back to playing well. But, yeah, I mean, this is a guy who, you know, used to be one of their most reliable defensemen, at, and he used to always be on the penalty kill. So, yeah, I mean, this is a team, you know, so this is going to be an interesting situation. So those are the only three players they really brought in. Tim Gleason's back, and then they bring in Brad Malone, and then Jay McClement. So two players from the Toronto Maple Leafs, and one player from the Colorado Avalanche. <laughs> Um, which really, which again, like I said earlier, does tell you that this is a team that's looking to rebuild from within their own system. Um, oh yes, and they did re-sign a bunch of players as well. They re-signed Yuri Tolusti, they re-signed Nathan Gerby, re-signed Ron Hainsey, 
and re-signed Brett Bellamore, who is one of the better, you know, young, who was, had a br very good rookie year last year. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're really just relying now on their young core. It's all up to the young core. But, you know, that really doesn't, and, but one thing that really won't help is one of the big questions going into the year for the Carolina Hurricanes. Will they have the weapons to improve on the power play? Their power play was just flat-out awful last year. It has not been that good in the past few years. Um, this is not a power play type team. They, um, they really aren't. They really are not a power play type team. Um, as, I qu as we quickly take a look at their statistics on the power play from the last few years, here's Carolina's power play was 28th in the league this past season. In the lockout shortened year, their power play was 27th in the league. So, it was even worse this year than it was in the lockout shortened year. 2012, their power play was better, but still not great. 20th in the league. 2011, <laughs> um, 2011, 24th in the league. Terrible. And then 2010, these are all the years that they've missed the playoffs. In 2010, their power play was 22nd in the league. So through these five years of missing the playoffs, the highest their power play was was 20th in the league, which is just flat-out awful. Just flat-out awful. The last time, I mean, and even in 2009 when they made the playoffs, their power play was 18th, which is not terrible, but it's not great. Hey, you know, their, their power play over the last few years has just been flat out awful. They need to get their power play fixed up immediately. Um, their last year's power play was by far the worst in the last few years. Even, let's see, and as far as the penalty kill is concerned, as far as the penalty kill is concerned, their penalty kill was, oh, was not as bad, but still... Not great. It was still in the bottom 15, 17th in the league. So there can be. There's always some improvement in that area. But overall, special teams is not this team's forte, and that's something that needs to change for the upcoming season. There is no doubt about that. <laughs> um, as far as what the lines could look like going into the season, we're it's going to be very interesting to see what the lines do indeed look like this season. You know, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, they got, um, they got, er again, Eric Stahl, Alexander Semin, and Yuri Talusti will be back, but there were even points last season when Eric Stahl was not playing with those two, and, was, and those two were instead playing with the other Stahl brother on that team, Jordan Stahl. There were times during the season when they were on, on with Jordan Stahl as well. Oh. Um, the line that Jordan, but it, it is expected that those two will be given a shot with Eric Stahl again, at least to begin the year, and hopefully that line could be better. And, the, and then you got Jordan Stahl as the second line center, playing with Elias Lindholm and Jeff Skinner. Um, Elias Lindholm is a guy who is naturally a center, but he has played wing since he came up. Um... He's another one of the good youngsters coming up in this league. The fifth overall pick from 2013. He's going to be a phenomenal player for them in the future. Um, and he's part of that young mold of players that's coming up now for the Hurricanes that's going to make up the future of this team. Third line could look like Jay McClement centering Patrick Dwyer and Nathan Gerby. Nathan Gerby tied career highs last year. <laughs> with 16 goals and 15 assists for a combined 31 points. That ties his career high, and he played all 82 games this past year. Um, he has proven to become one of the better depth players in the league and, and for the Carolina Hurricanes. And then the fourth line, you got guys like Riley Nash, Brad Malone, and Zach Boychuk, who could very well finally be ready to come up and play up for this team full time. Um, 
It's, you know, he has yet to really come up and be a mainstay in the lineup, and he's yet to live up to his draft status, you know, and he's 24 years of age, so he doesn't have that much time to fully live up to his draft status. And then Chris Terry is, is a guy who could be the <laughs> 13th forward. He doesn't have that much NHL experience, but... <laughs> He always is one of the best players down with the Charlotte Checkers of the American Hockey League. So you could expect that that to be the case. <clears throat> but this is not a, but looking at this group of forwards, this is not a physical team. This is not a team that's going to go and get a lot of penalties. They don't really have that grinder on their team that's really going to make a difference, you know? Um, defensively, you know, this is what they could look like on defense. You know, Andre Sakara was, without a doubt, their best defenseman last year. He will be back again, <coughs> and he could should be paired with Justin Falk, another one of the key pieces of their future. We got Ryan Hainsey, Ron Hainsey paired with Ryan Murphy. Ryan Murphy, another key piece of the future of this team. And then John Michael Lyles and Jay Harrison with Tim Gleason as the seventh defenseman. So um, it's going to be interesting to see. It really will. Um, um, so, because, you know, all these guys in the top six, you know, they're really good. And for Ryan Murphy, though, this has got to be a year for him to really come and improve himself, and hopefully he can be a mainstay in the lineup. That's why Tim Gleason's there, in case a guy like Ryan Murphy doesn't show stride like everyone believes he can. And the one problem with Ryan Murphy is his play defensively. He is an offensive defenseman. He's not a defensive defenseman. So, you know, this is a guy who's really going to have to improve his game defensively if he wants to stay in the lineup and be a big part of their future. And then in goal, oh, we have Cam Ward and Anton Kudobin. It was a very rough year last year for Cam Ward. Without, without a doubt, his worst season of his NHL career. Anton Kudobin, on the other hand, had a career year last year. So last year, Kudobin really to took, overtook Cam Ward's spot as the starter. One's got to expect that for this year, that Cam Ward's going to do his best to take that starting position back and stay healthy, which is actually one of the other big questions for the Hurricanes and one of the reasons why they've missed the playoffs for so many years. They cannot seem to stay healthy. Can they finally overcome the injury bug? That is going to be a big, big question for this team. Last year, they lost both of their first two, their top two string goaltenders to injuries at the same time and for an extended period of time. They had to utilize Justin Peters as the starter. Again, Justin Peters is no longer with the Hurricanes. He is now a member of the Washington Capitals. Um, and they also had to use another goaltender. Um, you know, they there was another goaltender they had to use as well. So it was not a good situation for the Hurricanes to be in by any means necessary. <coughs> um... And then other guys who could be in the mix to overtake spots in the lineup. Brock McGinn, forward Brock McGinn, forward Victor Rask, defenseman Brett Bellamore, who played most of the year last year. He is, very, he is another guy who will fight for a spot. Michael Jordan, another defenseman. And Drew McIntyre, a goaltender. I believe he was the goaltender. Yeah, he was the goaltender that, or, you know, yeah. Drew McIntyre, who was another guy that they got from the Toronto Maple Leafs as well. So, um, he doesn't have much NHL experience, and he's 31 years of age. So, we'll see. It'll be interesting to see. Michael Jordan, no, this is not the basketball player. Um, he's a guy who could grow, who's still growing. He's only had five NHL games for his career back in the lockout Jordan year. Um, but this is a guy who has some promise as a shutdown type defenseman, the native of the Czech Republic. So we'll see with him. Brett Bellamore, again, he played most of last year, so why he's even in this list is beyond me. He should be a main player in the roster, considering he does have another year to grow. Um, he'll be a signature defenseman on this team for a very long time. He was one of their better shutdown type defensemen last year um, as a rookie. And then again, and now as we go t take a look now as the top ten prospects for the Carolina Hurricanes, 
<coughs> you got take a look at Brock McGinn and Victor Rask. Victor Rask will challenge for a spot for the upcoming season, but he's projectedly not ready to play in the league this year. He could spend one more year down in the American Hockey League. Whereas Brock McGinn, who is their top prospect, is definitely ready to battle for a spot for this year's upcoming season. Overall, as far as the top ten prospects look as a whole for the Carolina Hurricanes, their t prospect pool is much better than it was last year. There's no doubt about it. Last year they had one of the weakest top ten prospects. This year they are much stronger, but not as strong as the New York Islanders. They're not as strong, deep a prospect pool as the New York Islanders. There's no doubt about that, but they are definitely much deeper than last year. Again, Brock McGinn is their number one prospect. He could be very much ready to play in the league for the upcoming season. Um, Hayden Fleury there is the number two prospect. He was their seventh overall pick from this year. Um, Philip DiGiuseppe, um, another guy who could be ready to play very soon. Victor Rask, um, you know... <coughs> Um, Alex Nedeljkovic is another good goaltending prospect, one of the 37th overall pick from this past year. But in my personal opinion, the prospect that highlights my world, and the, the prospect that stands out to me the most, in my personal opinion, is their number six prospect, defenseman Brett Pessy. Brett Pessy is a guy who I've heard so much about I've heard so much about him. He's a the former 66th overall pick from the 2013 NHL entry draft, and I actually watched this guy's highlights. He may not get a whole lot of points, but the Tarrytown, New York native, is a shut is a guy with great skating ability, an unbelievable set of hands, and he's a shutdown defenseman. He is more of a shutdown defenseman. He'll get down, block shots, kill penalties, and yet that skating ability, those great set of hands. You know, this is a guy, you know, if he develops somewhat of an offensive game, he could go on to become the next Tory Krug. You know, he is a, another Tory Krug type player. That's exactly who I compare this guy to. Ooh, he is a Tory Krug type player. <laughs> and if Brett, Brett, Brett Pessy, to me, is not that far off from making a rock from for challenge from challenging for a roster spot. It said his projected NHL arrival is not till 2016, 2017, and that could very much be true. You know, two years to develop, but in my opinion, he could maybe even be ready to challenge for a spot as soon as next year. I mean, um, now obviously if he's doing college full time, then yeah, you know, he needs a little more time, you know, he wants to graduate. But I think this is a guy who's going to bear the future of the Hurricanes blue line in the very near future. So I think the Hurricanes got themselves a steal with this third rounder. <laughs> now, for as far as the Carolina Hurricanes team goes as a whole, the player, in my opinion, who needs to be good for the Hurricanes in order for them to be a playoff team this year, you always got to fall back on the goaltenders with, in Cam Ward and Anton Kadobin. And as we all know, Cam Ward did not play well last year. He... <laughs> He really did not play well last year, and it really hurt them. But Cam Ward is not my choice for the player that needs to step up for them to be good next year. The player, in my opinion, that needs to be better for them next year, without a doubt, is Stahl. But not Eric Stahl, Jordan Stahl. Kind of funny, kind of surprising that I'd say Jordan Stahl needs to be the guy to step up rather than Eric Stahl. Well, here's why. Jordan Stahl hasn't exactly been the Mr. Everything that the Carolina Hurricanes have bargained for when they acquired him in, in, in during the 2012 NHL entry draft from the Pittsburgh Penguins. In his first season with Carolina, the lockout Jordan year, he was probably by far the worst season of his career, or at least one of the worst seasons of his National Hockey League career. It definitely was his worst season defensively. He was a minus 18 that year. Last year, through 82 games of play, he was a little bit better. <laughs> he was a little bit better. He had, you know, 15 goals and 25 assists for a combined 40 points in 82 games. 
and he was a plus two, so he was a plus. 34 penalty minutes and 165 shots on goal. And that's a start, you know, that is a start, but I've seen Eric Stahl play at, I mean, excuse me, Jordan Stahl play at his best. He is much better than what he showed last year. Probably the best I ever saw him was the 2011-2012 season, a season that saw him miss 20 games, and he st that was still the best season of his career, both offensively and one could argue defensively as well. Plus-minus-wise, 2009-2010 was his best year at plus-19. <coughs> but, you know, considering it was only 62 games played, and those were his best stats, that was without a doubt his best season. You know, Jordan Stahl really helped the Penguins get into the playoffs that year, even through the absence of Sidney Crosby. So, <coughs> that's my personal opinion about... Jordan Stahl. This is a guy who has the potential to be better. He'll never live up to that second overall status from the 2006 NHL entry draft, in my opinion. He'll never live up to that second overall status. There's always, I think, players like Jonathan Taves and Nicholas Backstrom and Phil Kessel and Kyle Oposo. Those guys have had much better NHL careers than Jordan Stahl, but at the very least, Jordan Stahl is living up to be, at the very least, a late first-round kind of pick and a second-line center who could put up some decent numbers. And he needs to prove that he can be that player with the Hurricanes, considering the kind of contract that he's under. He's making a lot of money over the, uh, the span of a lot of years. So, if, for my opinion, if, he, if the Hurricanes are going to be better, Jordan Stahl has to be better. And he's only 25, so he has a couple more years of years to grow and be a better player. Overall, are the Hurricanes a playoff team? I think they have the potential. I think they can make the playoffs. And I think they could be a team where if the youngst all the their 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 new core coming up of Jeff Skinner, Elias Lindholm, and Justin Falk and Ryan Murphy, if they can all step up their games, then they can make the playoffs. But do I think they're going to make the playoffs? I honestly don't think so. I thought they were a playoff team last year with the kind of year that Cam Ward had in the lockout Jordan year. I thought he was going to come back and be that same goaltender that was going to get them in. Now I'm not so sure. You know, Cam Ward had that rough year last year, and now he's in a position where he needs to prove himself again. You know, he needs to prove himself again. And Kadobin, even if Cam Ward can't prove himself... Kadobin needs to prove that he can have a better year than he had last year, and last year was his career year. He finished with basically with five games over 500 and had a very good statistics. So, you know, if those guys can come back and prove themselves, then they could have a good chance. But overall, you know, when you consider the kind of year Cam Ward had, you got to think that maybe his body is aging faster or his mind is aging faster than his body. And if that's the case, then the Carolina Hurricanes could be in some deep trouble, and they could be in a position where they need to start searching for a goaltender. But overall, no. I don't think this team is a playoff team just yet. I think they'll be in the hunt, and I think they'll be a team that will just, like the New York Islanders, kind of just miss the playoffs. I don't think they'll be as bad as last year. But I don't think they're going to make the playoffs. I mean, again, they won't be as bad as last year because their players are a lot more mature now. Um, and you can expect that their youngsters, who are much more mature now, will be better coming in. Maybe a lot. Elias Lindholm could be the exception because of the sophomore jinx, um, but we'll see. You know, but overall, though, I think there's a lot more room to grow. The Hurricanes, the Carolina Hurricanes, are not a playoff team this year. And that is my analysis on the Carolina Hurricanes. That'll do it for episode 134 of Hockey on the Spot. <coughs> Thank you all for joining me. Um, tune in for tomorrow's episode because for tomorrow, for those of you in my hometown, get ready, boys, um, because the New Jersey Devils are the team that I will be analyzing for tomorrow's video. So be sure to check out Hockey on the Spot tomorrow, home homeboys, when we talk about the New Jersey Devils. Until then, this has been Hockey on the Spot with Brandon Barenfeld. I'm Brandon Barenfeld. Thank you all for joining me today, and I'll see you all again tomorrow. Thank you, and have a great day.